So it's been a minute since the last tape video, but I finally got my hands on a new, well, a new old tape machine. Because it turned out the Tascam 488 from the last video, uh, or 488, however you say it. I'm English, so I say things weird apparently. That ended up having some of the tracks not working, as I sort of mentioned in the last video. So I've downgraded because the size was a little bit too big. So I've went from eight tracks to four tracks with the Tascam Porter Studio 414. Mark II and it's nice it fits on the desk for a start that's the that was the main thing that I was looking for I think I realized with the last video with my experimentation that I'm probably going to be using this more as an integration with digital technology like uh, DAWs like Logic Pro for example and not as much as a standalone unit as much as I will probably use this in that way but it'll be more you know breaking the mold fun sort of way rather than serious production but I will be using it for serious production alongside digital so I'm seeing it more as a tool for production rather than the main production unit itself which I think is going to be a really good way of of utilizing this in my modern sort of production style that I, I'm used to and that I enjoy doing. So that leads perfectly into the topic of this video which is ways that I've come up with to use this with the DAW like Logic Pro, like Pro Tools. So I'm going to be going through and experimenting in real time some ways that I've sort of come up with to use something like this, an analog piece of equipment alongside a modern DAW and get some really good results with the combination of the two. So the first way I've thought to use this is to send digital tracks that you've recorded already to the cassette recorder and then do some mixing on here. I was actually setting up for the video and I started doing this and I was like, oh, this is literally the first one. <laughs> so I thought I'd just document this. So I've saved you the boring part, but essentially I've got a bunch of these patch cables that come in all, you know, nice colors and everything. So you can make your little rainbow in the back of your interface. And basically what I did is inside Logic, I made groups of bass and drums in one, synths, guitars, and then vocals to fill up the four tracks. You will need a multi-output interface for this. I'm using the Tascam US 16 by eight and it's got six 16 inputs and 8 outputs so it's more than enough for what we need for this but you'd only need 4 outputs to do this. So now that I've broken the mix down into 4 different groups in Logic I've assigned the output to 3, 4, 5 and 6 and then took one of these lovely patch cables and plugged into the corresponding output that I just mentioned 3, 4, 5 and 6 and then into the inputs on the Porter Studio and this will be the same with most cassette recorders but obviously you might have the inputs in a different place. Then all you need to do is check it's all coming through on the right channels, uh, set the level if it's, you know, you might want to send it through a little hotter. I sort of made sure it was just touching the red because I love that tape saturation. That is one of the main reasons I got this is for that really authentic warm saturation that comes with it when you push it just a little bit. So now that's all set up. All you've got to do is press record on the cassette recorder and then press play on the computer. So then it should all record separately onto the tracks on the cassette recorder if it's all set up properly which hopefully it is at this point. Yeah, so now I can show you. We, I'll turn these all down and bring them in one by one. So this is a track off my upcoming album. I just thought it was a good one to break down into four tracks and it's just a rough mix at the moment and obviously even more rough on here, so don't judge it too much. But I'll just press play and then bring in the tracks one by one and then we can hear how it's all split up. So the first one should be bass and drums. You can really hear that like nice breaking up uh, tape saturation on there and then on this channel it's just some synth stuff this one should be guitar but there's no guitar at this point and then vocals on this track and then all together it did seem to mess with the timing a little bit, sending the tracks from mains face to here, but I've been having some issues with the digital Tascam, the 16x8. I know it's confusing because they're both Tascam, but I'm talking about the digital DAW, the, the one that connects to my computer. It's been just really glitchy recently, so I think that's why. But I'm just going to carry on with it for the sake of this video because I want to just use it to demonstrate some of the things that I'm going to do. Yeah, so it's pretty cool to like be able to break it up like this and physically be moving this. I said this so much on the last video. When you're so used to using a keyboard and mouse, you don't feel that tactile connection to the song and to like actually moving things about you know you just you feel it more and that's so important with music i think that's why i'm experimenting with this sort of stuff with combining the two the next use case that i've thought of that i think adds a ton of versatility is using the daw as an effects unit so we can send tracks from this into the computer and then return back into this and then because we've got two effects and we can then use these knobs to control how much of the effect we can actually hear when mixing on this this opens up unlimited options for effects that you can use like you could literally use anything that you can blend in which i think is a pretty 
pretty big deal in terms of expanding what this little unit can do. I was already checking to see if this worked, so I've got this set up, but I'll run through what, what I've done. So basically, we've got our best friend for today, the patch cable. That's going into effect send one, which is controlled by this level, into the computer and in input nine in my case, and then back out of the computer with this cable, out of output three, into stereo input five or six, which should bring the signal back in of the affected signal. So basically this one sends the signal out into my computer and then this cable brings it back out with the affected signal that we can then blend in using the effect send knobs here. Makes sense. It took me a sec to like get used to it all. This should work now. Hopefully let's let's find out. So now we just need to set up a bus in logic and then hopefully fingers crossed everything should line up and work and come through on here with whatever effect that we've put on it. So I've created a bus in Logic now. We're just gonna call this one Reverb. So the input I went into was input nine, but that'll be different for you depending on your interface. And the output needs to be mono output three. Whatever we play through these channels should come out of the effects end and back through so we can control it with this. So fingers crossed. Oh yeah, I forgot to load an effect. So I'm just gonna add my favorite Reverb, which is the Native Instruments. RC24. So this is the effect that we're going to be hearing. Okay, so if all this is set up right, we should now hear this. Okay, so we'll just do this on the drums, but... Yes, it's worked. So we could add this on anything we want. Probably be nice on vocals. And it is working, but we're just getting it on one side for some reason, which is part of the experimentation <laughs> process. Um, Reddit came to the rescue as, as usual. So I've switched to a TRS cable, which seems to have fixed it. So the difference between a TRS is that it can carry a stereo signal. For the people that don't know, this ring on the patch cable, this is like a mono signal. So it's just got one ring, and on the TRS it's got two, carrying the left and right channels. What I'm going to do now is do the same thing, but into Effect Send 2. So we can have a reverb on Effect Send 1, and a delay on Effect Send 2. I just want to show how this can be useful, and how... That light's not, not playing today. Um, I just want to show how this can be useful and how it can be used to mix. And also just imagine you could have any effect that you've got digitally in, in this workflow and even combine them and then blend them in. So once you get your head around it, it's a really versatile way to use these two things together. Just a tip as well, make sure your inputs are on mono as well, because I think that might have been another reason why it was on the one side. I'm not 100% but we're figuring this out as we go. So now I have a bus with a reverb and a delay. So now because of that, Effects M1 has a reverb on it and Effects M2 has a delay on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just show you that delay first, just so you can hear what it's like, uh, just on that synth. Ignore that. That was a test I was doing <laughs> the other day. So this is the delay. So yeah, we have both now, which is amazing. And if you wanted this to be a little less screen based, I guess you could just leave these loaded up and have this set up how you want it. And then just use those as you would hardware without changing too much. I mean, you could just have this set up as you like it and then just use the same effects every time. But I really like how you can change this up however you want. Like I could have any effect on here and blend it in. So what I'm gonna do now is have a little quick rough mix and just play around with the effect sends, the EQs, and just see what sort of sound I can get by combining these two. Bear in mind again, the timing's slightly off between it for some reason, and I think that's because of the interface. So try and ignore that, but I'm just gonna see what my first combination of digital and analog together can produce. That's pretty cool, like for a first try, it, it feels like more of an instrument because I can blend stuff in, like I can ride the delay up and then it carries on after like as a trail when you turn it back down. Yeah, I'm super pumped on this, just after like, that was actually my first attempt doing that. It's just like open like a million ideas up in my head of what, what can be done with this. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm just gonna replace effect one with a wah. Yes, we got the wah. I was interested how this would work as a sort of blended effect, but I think it was already, it already had a little bit of wah 
baked into this file. But it definitely like pushes it a little further. Yeah, the options are just like endless with this really. So now instead of having to go out and buy a bunch of effects pedals or effects units, you can just use a digital version and then blend it in. And honestly, once it's set up on the computer, you almost forget it's even there. Like you could even just turn off the screen and you'd still have the effects coming through. And it just feels like it's connected to a hardware unit, unless you can tell the difference in sound, which is controversial, but I do it. <laughs> so that's another way that this cassette recorder can be used with digital technology. Somehow it just works in unison so well, it's kind of beautiful. So another way that this can be used with a DAW is for monitoring purposes. So a company called Sonarworks makes a piece of software called Sonarworks Reference ID. I think that's what it's called now. I've got a really old version and it's called Reference, I think. Sound ID Reference. Basically what it does is instead of treating the room with stuff like acoustic panels and, you know, bass traps and things like that, it will make a reading on each speaker using a microphone and basically walking around the room for like 20 minutes just with this beep thing. It, it sounds insane, but after it's got the data, it'll analyze and then apply an EQ to each speaker individually. So instead of you treating the room to deal with maybe some drops in the low end or high end or whatever your room is causing, it will EQ the speakers to make up for that. So you'll get essentially a flat response. Honestly, it's incredible. I don't know how it's not been thought of earlier, but by using a cassette recorder and sending the output through your DIW, you can put Sonarworks on the output and then you'll actually get a treated room version of what's coming out of it, which obviously couldn't be done if this was just plugged directly into the speakers with nothing in between. So that's just another way that using this digital hybrid setup can really like level up your analog recorder. So the next way I've thought of to use this digital analog hybrid is to use the DIW as like a MIDI instrument where you could use any kind of keyboard, drum kit, any kind of MIDI controller and then feed the output into the cassette recorder. So you have essentially unlimited options but in an analog workflow. So I've got this Arturia beat step plugged in and I've got the ultra beat sampler so i've placed some custom drum kit sounds together essentially to make a drum kit and then what i've done is just set the output of this to come out the back of the interface and then into the cassette recorder similar to how we were just doing it and now you're hearing the output of the cassette recorder and yeah it's working, which is amazing. But you could use this exact same method for any keyboard sound, any drum kit sound, essentially any like digital instrument that you can use. So I'm gonna start recording a song, essentially. I wouldn't normally start with drums, but this made more sense for this video to go in this order. So I'm gonna get this recorded in and then add some more stuff in and I'll show you what other ideas I've got in mind. We're gonna hit record and hope this goes well. Shit. Didn't mean that, but. Let's, we'll keep it for the sake of this, we'll keep it. So let's find our new zero point. I really like on the 414 how it's got like a, what do you call it? It's got like an analog counter. I just think it's so cool. Like, so when it plays, you just see it rolling. And then if you press this button, it, that's the zero return. So essentially you find where, and then I stop. And then I hit this little button. And if zero return is set to on, then every time, let me just give you an example. If I fast forward, Every time I press rewind, it will head back to that zero point, which is just really simple. Like it, it seems way too simple to work this well, if that makes any sense. We've got our drums recorded with no counting. So there's no way to know the tempo or when it comes in. This is a rookie error. You know what I'm going with it. We're just gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna grab my guitar and record some of that with built-in effects from Logic, believe it or not. Let's get this plugged in, let's do this. So I've got the guitar plugged in, so I'm gonna send it out of output four and record this onto track two, so I've swapped this cable over. And now we're hearing it here. The process of working together with these is already feeling quite smooth, which is nice. Like I'm remembering which outputs are which cable, which could be made easier by labeling stuff, which I should definitely do. I'm getting used to the workflow as I go, because I didn't give myself a count in. I need to get used to when this comes in. For you, I was messing around out there. I realized that I played it way too fast on the drums as well. So I'm gonna try slowing it down. I don't know if that speed, if that slows down everything. Oh my God. I actually can't believe I did that. <laughs> That was like first try as well. I forgot to even mention that. So that was recorded with Helix Native and now I have access to every amp ever, kind of, I can use to record into an analog system as well. It's looking good, man. It's looking good so far. I'm liking it. So I'm going to keep recording a few parts onto this and then I'm going to show you another way that I've thought to just make this unlimitedly versatile. Okay, so I've just been having an absolute blast filling up the other channels on this. On track one, we've got the drums. Track two, we got a guitar, left guitar. Track three, we got a little bit of lead guitar. 
I decided to do another guitar on the right to add like more width to everything. But now that presents a problem because we have no tracks left. This is all we have. So what do we do? DAW to the rescue. <laughs> so the final way, in, in this video at least, to combine the analog and digital hybrid is to use the four tracks and then send those to the computer and then re-record over the tracks and then essentially have unlimited tracks. So let's try that now because then I'll have space for the bass, vocal and whatever else I want to add to this. I've just been following the tutorial of Super Duper for this because it's really odd how you get the tracks sent from this to the DAW. Track 4, unfortunately I can't actually get this out because it comes out of the sync out and I don't have an RCA to jack cable which is a little bit gutting. For the sake of this demonstration we'll just use the three tracks. So now that we know this we can get our tracks created. Track, oh that's not track, that's not how you spell. Track 2 and then track 3. Track 1 and 2 are coming into 15 and 16 on my interface and then track 3 is going to be coming out of effects in 2 and that's going to be coming in at input 10 on my interface, so we'll set that up here. And then hopefully when we play this, we start to see something come through into Logic. Beautiful. The audio is gonna be a little bit janky for a sec, so bear with me. All we need to do is arm these three tracks to record, press record on the laptop, and then all we gotta do is press play on the cassette recorder, and we'll have our three separate stems of what we've got on tracks one, two, and three. And it should be four, but I don't have the cable. <laughs> so, not this time. <laughs> And there we go, let's just double check that that's all good. Yeah, we got we got it all individually. I think what I'm gonna try and do is send just the guitar. So what I'm gonna do is make a track four, just record this on its own. So I've turned up track four, panned it to the left. Track four is now coming out of the main left. So I'll have that doubled rhythm guitar that was there. Nice. So essentially what we've got now is all the four tracks. Tape naturally fluctuates time-wise, so this might not be perfectly in time, but let's see. It's actually not bad. I think for a longer song that might fluctuate out of time, but for this small section it actually works, so I'm happy about that. So we have all four tracks now in the DAW, so essentially now we can record over two, three and four, and then just keep repeating this process. So what I'm going to do with this song is just record some bass and then some vocals, just to keep it quick. But you can imagine how far you could go with this. I'm pumped that that's actually lined up, because that gives me faith to record over this now, because I was worried that I'd record extra tracks and then when it records in, the fluctuation would be too much and I'll have to chop things up and everything. But it seems like, again, fingers crossed, it seems like it's gonna work. Let's record some bass on this. The stickers on it because I do plan on doing a project with this, but I've had it for like months now and still not started. So if anyone wants some free online lessons from Fender, then, then go for it. Start your trial. Not sponsored, but I wish it was. So again, we're gonna we're gonna run through logic with this. So I'm essentially using my usual workflow of recording digitally except just running it into this. So essentially I'm getting the nice sort of produced sounds that I like to use normally, but then I'm getting the sort of one take organic sort of feel of the cassette recording, which is perfect for me. That's what honestly what I've been looking for through this whole journey. So I'm pumped on that. That will do. So I'm going to go ahead and record vocals and some harmonies as well and then send all that and see how in time it is. So essentially what I've done now is similar to what we were doing before. I've just basically set up the output to go into the input of this. I've got a few effects on this as well, which are just going to be printed directly in. So we're still getting that analog sort of commitment, but obviously in this digital workflow. So I've got an EQ, a compressor, another compressor, and then I've sent it to a reverb bus as well. So this is what it's sounding like. Might add a little bit more reverb. So I'm gonna add some, that might be too much reverb actually. So I'm gonna add some vocals and harmonies to this on channel three and four, and then bring it in. Let's just go for a take. I was waiting my whole life. Nope, <laughs> it's hard not knowing where it comes in. Going on and on about why I care. That'll do. I've been missing writing songs, feeling like I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna actually add a little bit more reverb because I'm gonna do some harmonies on this as well. I was waiting my whole life just for you. Again, good enough. So now we've recorded over two, three, and four with bass, vocal, and harmony. So what we're gonna do is repeat the same thing we did where we record the tracks. So we're gonna go through that process again and then line it up and see if this works. And then if it does, you could literally go on forever. Essentially, you have unlimited tracks with that nice analog tape sound so 
We did it. Well, not yet. Let's see if it works. Okay, so now we have our three tracks. I'm going to pull them over and try to line them up. So the bass and vocal were recorded at the same time, so they should hopefully just slip right in. I was waiting my whole life just for you. It's pretty much there. I can see how this would get at a time if it was a, a longer song. And chopping stuff up can be done. It's a good compromise to have unlimited tape tracks, essentially. Let's see if the harmony lines up. I was waiting my whole life So it's all lined up, that's amazing. So what we've got here is essentially a seven track, four track song, which is pretty cool to even just imagine how far you could go with that. And it, and it really does have that like tape feel. That's amazing. So the benefits are this, so you get to keep that authentic, organic feel on the recording side of things and really commit to doing, you know, the best takes you can, which is a scary thing to commit to. And also you can then mix it afterwards in the box and like even retime stuff if you want to do that. You can add effects, you can take it further to mastering digitally as well. You can obviously add unlimited tracks. That's just a few ways I wanted to experiment. I know there's been a lot of rooted and stuff in this video, so if you didn't understand anything, just drop a comment and I can try and help you out. And also if this sparked any new ideas in your mind because now I can already feel a bunch in my head. Drop it down in the comments if you have any new ideas because I love the chats that I've been having down in the comments section as well. So I'm going to carry on experimenting with this thing and I'll see you on the next one.